So today in section 4.7, we are going to focus on something called the quadratic formula. We are going to use this to determine the solutions as well as how many solutions we're supposed to find. All right, so quick refresher, the quadratic formula, um, we have to identify a, b, and c from our quadratic equation. Remember, a is the number in front of x squared, b is the number in front of x, and c is your constant. And the quadratic formula says x equals the opposite of b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of it divided by 2a. So to solve using the quadratic formula, remember we're identifying the a, b, and c. We're going to plug them into our formula. And the first thing you should do is look at the discriminant. The discriminant is the piece that's underneath the square root symbol. So the discriminant is your b squared minus 4ac. That's going to help you figure out what, how, how many solutions you have and what type they are. So we're going to simplify the radical then, if possible, and condense down our answer. So in this case, identifying a, b, and c, a would be 1, since 1 is in front of x squared, b would be the 3, it's a positive 3, and c would be a negative 5. So plugging them into our formula, x equals the opposite of b, so since b is 3, we need negative 3, plus and minus a big square root. Inside that square root, we have to put the discriminant. The discriminant is our b term squared minus 4 times our a term times our c term. And then the whole thing gets divided by 2 times our a term. So let's clean up that discriminant. So our discriminant, again, was the part underneath my highlighter here. We want to do this part here, okay? So 3 squared would be 9. We're subtracting 4 times 1 times negative 5. So we're subtracting a negative 20, which really means we're adding 20. So that whole piece underneath becomes just a 29. That is our discriminant. So we have negative 3 plus minus the square root of 29, all divided by 2. Now, if you have a perfect square under that square root, you should simplify it out. 29 is a prime number. It doesn't have any perfect square factors. So that would be my answer. If I were to graph this, we would get a picture like this. And notice that we have two points where it's intersecting. They're not quite at a nice tick mark. But our answers are coming from what x equals. So one of these answers would be negative 3 plus the square root of 29 divided by 2. And the other one is the negative 3 minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. So that's why we're getting two separate numbers, two separate x-intercepts. So we get two real solutions. All right, let's try another one. So in this one, our a value is 4. Our b value is a negative 4. And our c value is a positive 1. So we have x equals the opposite of b, so positive 4, plus minus the square root of our discriminant. The discriminant is our b term squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times our a value times our c value. The whole thing gets divided by 2 times our a value. So looking at our discriminant, we have negative 4 squared, which would be 16. We're subtracting 4 times 4 times 1, so we're subtracting a 16 and dividing the whole thing by 8. 16 minus 16, though, is 0. So our discriminant is 0, and when we square it 0, we get 0. Adding and subtracting 0 to 4 isn't going to do anything. So we really just end up with the 4 divided by 8. Again, plus minus 0 isn't going to change my numbers at all. Okay, so we don't even have to put that in there. We should reduce this to 1 half. And if you look at the graph, here's your tick mark for 1. We are hitting the x-axis at 1 half. 
So your answer here should match your x-intercept in your graph. Notice that this one, the parabola is just touching the x-axis and turning back around, so we get one real solution. So two notes. You should simplify radicals if possible. And just like with factoring, make sure the quadratic is set equal to 0 first. So notice on this one, we have 2x squared plus 6x equals 3. We have to have a 0 on one side. So we're going to rewrite this as 2x squared plus 6x minus 3 now equals 0. So a is 2 b is 6, and c is negative 3. Going through the quadratic formula, we need the opposite of b, so negative 6, plus minus the square root of b squared, 6 squared, minus 4 times a times c. All of it gets divided by 2 times a. All right, let's clean up the discriminant. Inside our square root symbol, 6 squared would be 36. We're subtracting 4 times 2 times negative 3. Well, 4 times 2 would be 8. 8 times negative 3 would be negative 24. 36 minus a negative 24 is 60. So x equals negative 6 plus minus the square root of 60, all divided by 4. So our discriminant is a 60. If we were to look at the graph, notice we see two x-intercepts, so we have two real solutions. We can simplify this solution a little bit. We can factor out a 4. 60 is the same as 4 times 15. So we should simplify this down. The square root of 4 would be 2, and we still have a root 15. And since we can divide every term by 2, we can divide a negative 6 by 2 and get negative 3. We can divide 2 root 15 by 2 and just get a 1 root 15. And we can divide the 4 by 2 and get a 2. So that would be my simplified answer. Again, you could type those on your calculator, negative 3 plus the square root of 15 divided by 2, and negative 3 minus the square root of 15 and divide it by 2 and you should get values that match what your graph is showing for x-intercepts. All right, so just to kind of summarize, when we looked at that discriminant, if our discriminant was greater than 0, in other words, it came out to be a positive number, we ended up with two real solutions or two x-intercepts. There were two spots where our graph was touching that x-axis. If the discriminant came out to be exactly equal to 0, we had one real solution, and our parabola just touched on the x-axis and then kind of turned back around. If our discriminant ends up being negative, then we get no real solutions. What that's telling me is that my graph is never going to cross the x-axis. So, possibility of getting two real, one real, or no real solutions. If we get no real solutions, technically what we're getting are two imaginary numbers. All right, so sometimes we can just use the discriminant to identify how many solutions. Sometimes we're not asked what is the solution, just is there a solution and how many. So let's go ahead and just do the discriminant part of our whole big quadratic formula. Remember, discriminant was just b squared minus 4ac. So for our first example, y equals x squared minus 3x plus 7, if we're just finding the discriminant, we're going to take b, which is negative 3, squared, minus 4 times our a value, which is a 1, times our c value, which is a 7. Okay? a, b, c. Negative 3 squared would be 9. We're subtracting 4 times 7, so 28. And 9 minus 28 would be negative 19. So because it is negative, our number of real solutions, actually I'm going to, I'll change this up. The number of solutions, we have 0 real, 
And again, when we have zero real, what it really means is we have two imaginary. But typically, you're just going to be asked how many, solu how many real solutions. So we would say we're going to have no real solutions on that one. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try this last one. All right, checking your answer. A is 2, B is 1, and C is negative 5. So our discriminant would be B squared minus 4 times our A value times our C value. 1 squared is 1. We're subtracting 4 times 2 is 8 times negative 5 would be negative 40. So 1 minus negative 40 is really 41. Because it's coming out as a positive number, we are going to get two real solutions. Okay. Homework for today will be a delta math assignment.